Welcome to another episode of Ask Your Doctors. It is January and it is back to school. So this week's episode is called Back to School and we are trying to see how we can prepare ourselves to take our children back to school and maybe ourselves back to work as well. But we will focus on the bundles of joy for now. Now we have in our midst a very special lady, a clinical psychologist from Hatfield in Pretoria, Ms. Leta Silamulela. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, doctor. Okay, you're welcome. Coming up in the show, we will be discussing the back to school hassles and she will unpack to us how we can cope as much as she can with what's facing us. And we will be talking to, we go viral with Bunolo Mashishi, our virologist. And later on, we will be giving you details of how you will reach uh, Leta Selamulela when you want to get assistance from her in Hatfield, Pretoria. I believe you have passion for children. Yes, I do. Okay. Before we get right into it, uh, can you tell us about yourself? Okay. Um, as you've introduced me, I'm a clinical psychologist and I definitely do have special interest in children. So yeah, and then I've been in the field for quite some time. I started practicing in 2006, and, but I still, I do work with adults. I work with teenagers, I work with organization, and I've done a couple of shows for media, for TV, radio okay. as well, yeah. So you are well within your <laughs> element here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually spread my wings in terms of my career, yeah. Okay, and uh, how did you, for those that do not understand what a child psychologist does, how did you study? What do you do on a day-to-day okay. -day basis? All right. Um, clinical psychology basically entails um, understanding human behavior. Um, we basically diagnose and treat mental, emotional, and behavioral disorders. So like your anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, working with couples, yeah. Your passion with kids, why kids? You know, um, I'm sure you'd agree with me, kids are vulnerable and they're the most innocent beings ever. You know, adults have seen it all, if I can put it like that. Mm -hmm. And adults can put up um, a lot of defense, so sometimes it can even be a bit difficult to penetrate when you work with adults, but children are easy, you know, so I mm. love working with children, and I've had tremendous results actually working with them. Speaking of children, uh, later, you know, I myself have a long history of working with children. I actually, in the, ne in the first 10 years of my working, maybe 15 years, built my practice around children. It was because that time I had such a passion for them. That was mm. the time when my children were getting born and whatnot. Hey, I don't know about now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to counsel me back to my old form so I can continue wanting to work with children again. Because, but I work with colleagues, so if someone does something better than you, you must just wash your hands and let them do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In any case, tell me, these kids, uh, I know you don't only work with kids, mm -hmm. but now let's handle the kids for now. Yeah. Uh, do you think kids have gone through a lot in the last two years of COVID? Of course, um, they have. And remember, you know, how COVID changed the whole world, the way we do things. And they were affected with regards to schools. You know, there were times when children couldn't go to school. They were supposed to be at home. They missed their friends, you know. Mm. Imagine, you know, with the way this pandemic happened, everything just changed. You know, in a moment, they were told, tomorrow, no school. Tomorrow, you can't play with you your kids. Hug. You can't hug, you know. Mm. That's social contact, you know, contact. So they were definitely affected the most, mm. especially. What seemed the biggest... What's been the biggest concern that you have found with children overall with their health? They became very anxious, mm -hmm. most of them, and isolated. Some experienced depression, you know, and the new way of doing things, like with the private schools, they had to do this online. Okay. And 
academically they were affected. You know, um, you know how UNISA works, um, University of South Africa. Imagine taking your child now to UNISA, distant learning. Distant learning, yeah. That's how they experience, you know, um, their academic environment. They had to now study at home without parents, having to do online classes. Some couldn't even study. I know. You know. Uh, depending on which school you find yourself. Yes. Because people in certain privileged schools could continue to study. Mm -hmm. Certain underprivileged communities, whether it's university or whatever, they couldn't study. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And uh, we, were, we were actually going to handle this and find out if, long term, do you think homeschooling is something that is doable for children? Long term. You know, let me uh, just compliment my question. Um, you, you find that a teacher is such a center of authority and respect and comfort for certain children. Mm. Even children that get abused, they get more comfortable at school when they yes. go back to their teacher to say, there's a parent I can rely on. Do you think homeschooling is going to take away all that and it's the norm that we have to get used to? Also, being a psychologist, I know that children learn through play. So if a child has to do homeschooling, which I'm not criticizing at all, is another form of learning. However, the social aspect of it, where children learn through play with other kids, you know, a homeschooled environment, depending on how it's going to be done, if a child will just get a tutor at home and be taught alone, how will the child grow? Mm -hmm. You know, because they also learn through interacting with other children, their peers, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so for me, um, if it's an environment where there will be other kids as well, where they can interact with other children, I think mm -hmm. it's a way to go. But if the child is going to be isolated, being on their own, then, you know, they... So the jury is still out on homeschooling. And we... More research still need to be done, done yeah. you know, with regards to that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about the parents. Um, do you think the parents are so preoccupied now with COVID and other things that they're now overlooking their, their responsibilities over the well-being of the kids. Is that a sense you get, generally? We're not judging. Yeah. We're just doing an assessment. Maybe yeah. we can give pointers here and there. Mm. Parents, maybe before you leave, you will tell us. But parents, I've been dying to tell you this. Please look out for one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes, um, the COVID actually affected, you know, everyone. It affected the parents. It affected the children. So. Also, you know, parents um, had to start doing new things. Some, you know, worked from home, which worked better for them. They could, you know, look after the kids while they are looking, you know, at their work as well. But also the anxiety as well of um, parents also being scared of this new thing that did, they, did, they didn't understand also, you know, mm -hmm. affected them a lot. So what I would say to the parents is, they need to look at because in the past two years most children developed anxiety mm. i actually had a lot of referrals um, of children um, experiencing anxiety and depression so they look they need to look at that um, how their children are coping some children are isolating themselves you know i've had a couple of even teens children you know I, I'm, I'm also talking about teenagers mm. where they had suicidal ideations because... I heard there was a lot of that in the last two years that the attempted suicide rate went up. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Let's admit there are a lot of parents that were also anxious themselves that ended up in your couch. Yeah, because remember the measures that were put in place with regards to COVID, mm. isolation. No. I had a few panic attacks. <laughs> <laughs> that same Thursday when we closed up, I had a few panic attacks and I'm a smart ticket, so I was a mess. And, mm. and I didn't know what was happening. And uh, this was well before I got COVID myself, so I know. And I you, know. you yourself experienced, you yeah, know. The you, anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of that, the problem was, I didn't even know we were allowed to go to hospital emergency. 
Mm. You know, when the soldiers were going up and down our street, <laughs> I didn't even know they would let us go to hospital <laughs> if I get an asthma attack on the mm. evening. And I have to admit, I had to start, I only discovered then that I was getting high blood pressure. And mm. so I know that parents were in trouble. And mm. I'm supposed to be in the medical field. I'm supposed mm. to be having connections. But let me tell you, I was more worried about keeping the business running. We were, couldn't even go to work for one or two days after the lockdown started. So mm. I, I, I think I am a, an example of one of your patients that didn't mm. make it to your practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then also you've got kids. I mean, yeah. I also have children. And under those conditions, you are sending your kids. Well, when the country opened, we had to send our kids to school. Mm. You are also concerned, is my child going to cope? Is mm. my child bringing COVID? You know, those kind of things. So I sent them to my mother, but I didn't know whether I had to test them for COVID first or <laughs> isolate them first. Honestly, honestly, I didn't know. But they were there for two, the two months where it was hard lockdown. Yeah, mm. I sent them there. So it was very difficult. Yeah. So how are you coping with all this anxiety between children and parents? You know, dealing with anxiety from a professional point of view, we know that anxiety is brought about by negative information. Um, I'm not going to use a lot of jargon, professional jargon, but just simplicity. When you hear a lot of negative things, you will definitely develop anxiety. You know, so what I would say is how to deal with anxiety, stay away from negative information. Everything that we need to know about COVID, mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. now. So always looking at the news, what is happening with COVID, you will become more anxious. So, so be more positive. Be more positive. Stay away from the news. Okay. Obviously, you will take care of Especially yourself. Especially if the waves are going up. Yes. Stay away from the news. Don't count on a daily basis. No, because yeah. later on you will be one of the states. I mean, <laughs> we do have um, experts that come in and advise us about how to stay away from getting infected. Mm -hmm. But thank you for suggesting this one to say, from a psychological well-being point of view, stay away from negativity. Because I have heard that people say, um, people that say I had COVID. There were days when I was depressed and there were days when I was negative. I nearly died more out of the panic yes. than the actual disease itself. Exactly. You know, I've had people say that. Mm. And to our audience out there, please remember, I always speak of experts and guests that come in here. You are well within your right to write to us, make comments on our social media pages, go to our website, our our askyourdoctors.co.za website. Leave your comment there, leave your questions there. We will source out the experts and we will let your questions be asked on air and the experts will give us the answers. In any case, um, so we've dealt with the parents and the children and um, we've dealt with how parents uh, have been sort of overwhelmed anxious themselves um, now you said people must stay away from anxiety but what from other negative activity, information negativity, yeah, yes. to avoid anxiety yes what other positive things activities do you encourage that people can get involved in, in order to okay yeah Obviously, coping mechanisms coping mechanisms yeah um theoretically we are taught that you cannot be relaxed and anxious at the same time so you are either anxious or relaxed. So one of the ways to deal with anxiety is through relaxation techniques, and there okay. are lots of them. We've got breathing exercises, which relaxes people, and we've got what we call imagery, but then all the relaxation techniques because of the theory that you cannot be anxious and relaxed at the same time. The two yeah. that you've mentioned, are the ones I've been advised to use for my panic attacks. Okay. Yes. Imagery, what do you mean imagery? Imagery. Imagine something yes, positive. Yes. Um, you can actually play a relaxing music, mm -hmm. lie down on a couch, mm -hmm. and then have a picture 
of something that relaxes you mm -hmm. while you're breathing in and out. You know, you can think about nature, you can think about a beach, whatever that will relax you. So um, there are ways to do it. Mm -hmm. You can Google it or you can go to a therapist, mm -hmm. somebody that is trained to do the relaxation. But one doesn't techniques. replace the other. Yes. That yeah. one is information. This one is management. Yes. Like complete management. Yes. Because we mustn't make that mistake. Exactly. People think I've Googled something, I'm okay. <laughs> you know, that it doesn't replace the, the real yes. thing. Yes. Now, I hear that we should do these workshops for children as well. You must train your children breathing exercises mm -hmm. and you must motivate them. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm taking my bundle of joy next week to school. You know? mm -hmm. I don't know if they will open or not. We don't know. You know? Yes. Uh, let's say we're doing our bundle of It's incidentally, it's funny that it's like mid-January, but we don't even know. If children are going to school, but, ugh, mm. maybe but with the way things come. are going, the country has been opened. So you're you positive. <laughs> I'm very positive. That's another coping yes. mechanism <laughs> I should adopt. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we'll hear. Okay, yeah. we'll hear. Mm. Yeah. So, any other coping mechanisms you want to suggest? Um. Yeah. As I said, that um, the other coping mechanism is to, the minute you get something negative coming to your mind this mm -hmm. is a more cognitive behavioral um technique mm -hmm. when something negative comes like you're thinking am i gonna make it am i gonna get sick you know this is something that you're not sure about mm -hmm. so tell yourself it is an unrealistic thought replace it with a more realistic that i'm actually healthy now i'm actually feeling mm -hmm. fine and i'm going to definitely do better like replace it with a more realistic positive thought so you can play games in with your mind and your mind shouldn't play games with you exactly there's what we take call, over yeah take over take charge take control of your mind because you can and a mind is a very powerful tool that mm -hmm. one can use you know as in terms as of your health right as long as you use it the right way if you use it negatively we know that it will affect you negatively and it can actually attack your immune system. You can actually get sick from negative thinking. Mm. Mm. Any advice you have for parents that are now having to become teachers out there? The advice is, you know, you have to be trained. I believe in training. Mm. I'm not a teacher. I'm a psychologist. So mm. I won't go and try and teach. I can train, mm. you know with regards to mindset mm. and all that. But the COVID forced us into being teachers at Whether home. you want it or not. You know, we were thrown into the deep end. <laughs> you so, know? so being a teacher now at home is a coping mechanism. Is a co there's nothing you can do. <laughs> you know, yes. But then mm. it's better that you are a trained person so that you don't damage. Mm. You know, when you're not trained to do something, you can actually cause damage. You know, so if you are a parent and you want to be a teacher, rather get training. I can admit something. In metric, I was very good with my math. But when my grade seven, grade six child brings me their stuff to do at home, hi, 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 hi. Yes, <laughs> you, you know you can be good at something, but it doesn't mean that you, you can, can teach, teach it. No, I don't even understand what they are doing. <laughs> exactly. Now, are, in any case, you know, I would like you to prepare for us your last words on the topic. Mm -hmm. Please think of something that you've always wanted to tell the parents. So it's mm -hmm. January. Guys, we're going to cope. This is where we're going to start and end. Fine. But uh, for now, we will cross over mm -hmm. to our uh, virologist. We mm -hmm. go viral with Bunolo Mashishi, Dr. Bunolo Mashishi. And uh, we want to find out from her how do uh, vaccines work for most diseases now. Okay. Over to you, Bunolo. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Mashishi again, and I'm here to give you some very insightful information. So um, many people are concerned about why they still get the virus after being vaccinated. So remember, the vaccines are designed to prevent people from seriously getting ill, getting hospitalized, or even dying from the virus. Obviously, with all the variants that are going around, it is still possible to get infected. That's why it's important to continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and keep a safe distance. So mutations are a term that we use to typically describe the changes we see in viruses after they have changed and evolved to adapt themselves to humans. 
Vaccines are certainly safe for pregnant women, reason being that women also who are pregnant have higher risk of developing um, severe COVID disease and can get seriously sick. So it's advisable if you're pregnant and if you're breastfeeding to get your vaccine for COVID. Thank you, Bunolo. Uh, always informative. We are still with our guest, uh, Leta Silamulela, clinical psychologist based in Hatfield, Pretoria. And I've asked her, please, to leave us on a good note. So now, before you leave us, ma'am, tell us, uh, where can people find you? Do you have any presence, website, social media, telephone, anything that you think works best when people want to find you? Because I'm sure there's a few members of our audience that are anxious to start calling, mm. you know? Okay. Where can people find you? Okay. Um, they can find me in Pretoria Headfold. I'm based in Headfold, and my website is www.letterconsulting.co.za. All my okay. details are there. All your yes. details are there. Yes. Social media? Also social media. Where you get um, exciting yeah. presentation Instagram, of your business. Instagram, Facebook, yeah. So it's yeah, Instagram yeah, and Facebook. And Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's letterconsulting.co.za on the website. Yep. Guys, and when you go to our website, you will find her details there because that's what you do. Remember, when you go to our website, you find a few things. One of them is the details of all our guests. And the other thing you find on our website is the questions that you can post and comments that you can leave for us there. Even if you want to suggest future topics, that's how far we go. The audience sets their agenda for our show. Anyway, ma'am, leave us with good words now. Something positive to let us go and okay. nudge those bundles of joy. Yeah, into because class. we've been talking about a whole lot of negative things, but you know what? Mm. Change, change will always be there. It is life. And what we've been experiencing in the past two years is change mm. and we can only grow from change and when you find yourself in a negative situation the best thing to do is to be bold about it just be courageous and face it that's the only way tell yourself it's a challenge it's a challenge a stumbling block yes and the worst thing that can happen to you is to die and we are still alive and we've gone i've gone through covid i don't know how many times i don't i don't, I don't know yes anyway um the other thing we can tell our kids, which I'm thinking of, is that change is good for them too, because they are going to meet new friends. Yes. And I know this is a technique we use all the time when we tell them when they go to school, to say, listen, make friends, yes. go there. But now it's COVID, how do I make friends? <laughs> <laughs> in any case, you know? Yeah, yeah they, they will make friends in a new way. In a new way. Yeah. Yes. But mm. I, I've, I've seen four-year-olds how they cope with masks. Shame. They just know how to wear masks. Yeah. Most children have been born and all they have done is wear a mask. That's what they know. Yeah, that's yeah. what they know. Yeah. I've seen a three-year-old that moves it, eats, puts it back. <laughs> 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 People have had coping mechanisms <laughs> with this thing. In any case, and thank you for your encouraging uh, insights and advice. And I am quite sure you are not going to abandon us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will be there when we talk about uh, topics like uh, in the future, mm -hmm. topics like uh, how people realize that dry January is not working all on its own because we encourage dry January, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Some people cannot do it on their own. When do I realize that? Now I need rehab. Mm. That's our topic for next week. Please stay tuned and do come back and see that episode. In any case, thank you, ma'am. Guys, thank you for watching. This is Ask Your Doctors. Go to YouTube, subscribe, go to our social media pages, read our blog on our website, and that's where you can get the topics that are coming up and formulate questions from there. We will come up with an expert to ask your, to answer your questions. Thank you for watching.